What? It's time now for my two favorite librarians. Brought to you by Copper Tree Boutique in Dales Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. Hi, this is my two favorite librarians. I'm Denise Corey. I'm Chantel Taylor. And today we're talking about authors using pseudonyms. Did you know that today is a holiday? Um, I do now, <laughs> but I didn't maybe 24 hours before we started recording. <laughs> yeah, because we do have people coming into the library uh, a couple days a week now, two days. And somebody said, well, do I come in during the holiday? And I was like, what holiday? There's a holiday. <laughs> I barely know what month it is. I know. The end of the week, really. I do okay the first of the week, but like every Wednesday at about 10 o'clock at night, I'm like, I forgot to email Ron about coming in and getting the equipment. (laughs) So yeah, today is a holiday. Happy Victoria Day, everybody. I hope you are spending it well. And I hope that the weather is good because, of course, we record this the Thursday before. It's supposed to be allegedly in the double digits. Good. I have things I need to plant, and I need it to stop snowing. Good luck with that. Okay. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, I just... Some library housekeeping. Mm Mm-hmm. As you know, we're doing Borrow by Mail. So if you would like us to send you books in the mail and you have a library card in Cumberland County, you can call us or email us. Do you want to give us the numbers? <laughs> Are you going to clicker me? <laughs> click, click. Uh, the phone number you call is 902-667-2135. Because there are only people in a couple days a week, you might get an answering machine and you should leave a message. Or you can email information at cumberlandpubliclibraries.ca. If you don't have a card, you can email us and we'll give you a card. When you email us to get a library card, please include your name, your mailing address, your telephone number. And if we have any questions, we'll give you a call. Sending us your name, we can't give you a library card. We need need more information. A little more. Just a little more. And sometimes when it comes in through the, like you can go on to our website and click on get a library card, we don't have your email address when that happens, right? So we literally have no way of contacting you. Yes. So if you use the form online, please fill in all of the areas, all of the lines that are there. And if we have any questions, we will give you a call or an email to confirm your address. Thank you from the library staff. Also, (laughs) we will send you your card number right away so you can access our online digital resources because we have Overdrive, Arby Digital, and Hoopla. Yes. Sorry, crackling water bottle. (laughs) Yeah, so I made a note to mention this today anyway. Overdrive is downloadable audiobooks and ebooks. RB Digital is downloadable magazines. And Hoopla is downloadable audiobooks, ebooks, movies, TV shows, and music. Yes, all kinds think, of stuff. I think I, I think I got everything from Hoopla. Yeah, I watched Donnie Darko on Hoopla the other day. It's creepy. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in years. It was very good, and I forgot Patrick Swayze was in it. Oh, Patrick Swayze. I want to watch Roadhouse. I did not check to see if that was on Hoopla. Sorry. It's all right. It's on one of my Roku channels, I think. So let's talk about authors using pseudonyms. Very common. I think looking through the list of authors, more authors than not use a pseudonym. Yeah, and for a lot of reasons. Yes, I have a list. Oh, okay. Would you like me to go over it? Yes. So, thank number you for one, doing research. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, number one is privacy. Yeah. So, maybe you're writing something controversial and you don't want your like neighbors very to know conservative that you parents. Write erotica. Yes, Tara Sumi. Mm hmm. In her thank you on the front cover, she's like, I hope someday my parents will know this is me. Not that her parents are probably looking at erotica, but nonetheless. (laughs) Um, Maybe they are, and maybe she does not want to know that. (laughs) If they have a career in government or teaching, Mm. so Eloisa James, who writes romance, she's actually a Shakespeare professor at Columbia, and she'd gotten her contract, and she'd given a colleague 
a chance to read her book. And the colleague was like, you can never let them know you're up for tender. Ten Tenure. Tenure. Thank you. You're up for tenure. <laughs> You're up for tenure. Um, you can never let them know that this is you. So if you're doing something, you know, if you have a, an amusing quoting marks that you can't see, respectable career. Ugh. Or perhaps if you're espousing a particular political stance that maybe might threaten your life in certain countries, Mm -hmm. you may want to use a pseudonym. Or even publish under anonymous, like some of the books that are published about the American government, you find they're published by anonymous. And then there's a great controversy trying to figure out who who it it is. Yes. So genre, differences in genre. So maybe you're like famous mystery writer and maybe you want to publish in science fiction. J.D. Robb, Nora Roberts. Yeah, exactly. Nora Roberts primarily writes romance. She writes under J.D. Robb to write these sort of grittier procedural set in the future cop. Or maybe you're a like kids writer and you want to start writing some adult books. So Victoria Schwab, V.E. Schwab. I think she writes some young adult, but she also writes some, I think it's fantasy adult. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, witches. And so maybe that audience won't go with you to the next, so you can't rely on that name to go forward. So gender, Mm -hmm. a lot of people want a gender neutral name. J.K. Rowling. J.R. Ward. I don't know who that is. She's a romance novelist, but she's writing like almost like an urban fiction. There's also another romance, and it's something J.K. Charles writing M.M. romance. Mm -hmm. And so she's given herself a very like gender neutral, but more on the masculine side kind of name. Historically, people who had to hide their identity because they were female... Yes. Would go for a pseudonym. Like the Bronte sisters. Uh, George Eliot. Yeah, George Eliot. The Bronte sisters all wrote under pseudonyms to begin with because, you know, it was considered to be unfeminine. Yes, they didn't think that publishing was a woman's business. Nothing was really women's business back in those days. (laughs) So for sales reasons and I feel this is a very North American thing if your name is too complicated or people might not Uh. remember it or it's hard to pronounce Mm. then maybe you want and um, this has been going on forever you think of all the Hollywood stars that had their names redone for something Mm -hmm. catchier for something that's more and again quotey marks marketable yeah co-writers you learn how to pronounce somebody's name if you care exactly like Mike and Dace. I mean, probably if he was publishing in the U.S., they would have made him change his name. Probably, yeah. Hmm. Co-writers. So if yes. you're writing a book together, so romance author Christina Lauren is actually two ladies writing together. Preston Alona Child. Andrews, husband and wife team. Mm-hmm. So there's all kinds of um, switching publishers. Oh, like if your catalog is sort of owned. Yes, and it costs less money. You switch publishers, and so you're using a new name, so you don't have to pay, I don't know, like some sort of fee to the previous publisher. Mm -hmm. But switching publishers, also bad initial sales. So maybe you published a book and it bombed, Mm -hmm. and it was the worst book that's ever been made, and people still make fun of it to this day. I have no example of this. (laughs) But you want to sort of sanitize your past and go forward with a new name. Or you're... You're sanitizing your past and going forward with with a new name because you don't want to be compared to your previous successes. Like J.K. Rowling wrote the Robert Galbraith books because... Everybody knew. But not initially. Didn't they? No. Did she publish a book before that under a different name? Because I felt that people were like... Oh, this is J.K. Rowling. When the book was initially published, so that's Cuckoo's Calling, they did not know who it was. Her publisher kept it very much a secret. And the initial sales were kind of, I feel like, okay. Not It wasn't a secret. No, it was. Go back and look it up. I don't know. But and once it was discovered, it was her. Yeah, it was different. Yeah, and the the book. But she initially was. She just wanted to write 
a book without the Harry Potter weight without, on her. Well, because when she published uh, Casual Vacancy under the name J.K. Rowling, there were so many comparisons made with Harry Potter. Yeah. And, uh, these are very different books. Apples and oranges, yeah. Yeah. So the last reason is just for fun. Maybe you just don't want people to know who you are. You want to write something silly or something that's really sexy or you just want a separation of, you know, work and home. Well, there's another reason, which I don't think is as common now. Uh, When Stephen King was early in his publishing career, his publisher didn't want him to sort of water down his brand by publishing too many books a year. That's now changed because they want a book a year. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that that's not what James Patterson's publisher says. Nope. So Stephen King wrote several books under the name of Richard Bachman so that he could publish more things in a year than his publisher would let him. And some of these are my favorites. Rage, The Long Walk, Roadwork, The Running Man, Thinner, The Regulators, and then around when The Regulators came out and then there was another one called Blaze, we already knew that Richard Bachman was Stephen King, but before that it was really not well known. And I suppose in those days where there's no internet, yeah, and you if you weren't controversial, someone may not go because like was he doing author tours as Richard Bachman? I don't believe so. So I mean, now if you've lied about anything, people will out you on the internet. So oh, it yeah. must be so much harder to now. You have to really say. So let's talk about Jane Ann Krantz. Okay, I was leaving her off the list. Because I only bring this up because it makes you cranky. (laughs) Jane Ann Krantz writes as Jane Castle, Jane Taylor, Jane Bentley, Stephanie James, Amanda Glass, and Amanda Quick. Yes, and I had read something where Jane Ann Krantz had made a rather controversial statement probably back in the 90s. She may feel differently now. And I was like, I don't like her. And then I read Amanda Quick, and I was like, oh, I love this author. It's so good. And then I found out it was her. (laughs) I really just like to do things to make you cranky. It's very funny for me. Speaking of cranky. Yes. If you are on Facebook, you can find my two favorite librarians at home. We're doing a Facebook podcast. Uh, it's a little video of us. You can see us in all a our... little video. You can see it in us in all of our gray-haired glory. You don't sound like a 90-year-old woman at all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a VCR to watch it. We're on the Facebook. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's fun. And also, you can join our Facebook group and uh, talk to us about what you're reading and interact and we're happy to answer things and tell you what we're reading and Chantel posts things that make her cranky and also things that she likes like recipes and videos of Stanley Tucci uh, making making, drinks mixing cocktails yeah Stanley Tucci is the internet's new boyfriend (laughs) so that was just an aside yeah thank you you're welcome if you wrote a book would you write under a pseudonym Yes. Have you ever thought what it would be? No. Oh. I like my name a lot. Okay. But I feel like probably I would be writing things that I wouldn't want people to know I was writing. You wouldn't want your mother to know that you were writing erotica. I don't know that I could do erotica, but romance. I almost took a class with Sarah McLean on how to write romance. Oh, you chose not to take it? I hummed and hawed and then the tickets were sold out again. No. I also don't know that I want to give money to the United States because all the proceeds are going to a charity, which is great. But nonetheless, I could give that $20 American to feed Nova Scotia. Yes. Or the library. The library is a registered charity. We will give you a tax receipt. That would help us offset the amount of money we're spending mailing books to people's houses. But we are happy to mail books to people's houses because the library misses you as much as you miss us. We do. We really, really do. So right now I'm reading Interview with the Vampire. Yes. I know that we had mentioned this. And then today I was thinking, oh, 
Anne Rice also writes under a pseudonym. She does. I can't believe the number of... Like, I have a great big list of people, and almost everybody writes under a pseudonym. Well, Anne Rice writes under uh, the name Anne Rampling and Anne Rochler. Yes. And those are both erotica. Yes. Yeah. I tried to read... I did not like Sleeping Beauty. It is. I, uh, it is the classic version of erotica and I think people think from um, Fifty Shades of Grey erotica is not necessarily a happy ending which romance it's always is it's not a is. romance yeah and so erotica can be a lot darker and one of the things that I'm seeing as far as erotica the new buzzword is sort of dark romance okay well I tried to read the Sleeping Beauty one it, it really I tried to read it too. I'm glad I didn't finish it. It didn't really appeal to me. But that is not to say that if you enjoyed it, that we are book shaming you. Oh, read no. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah, so I've completed 33 books so far this year. I have not. And uh, 25 of the 50 pop sugar reading challenges. Nice. Yeah. And since it's a long weekend, you can sit on your deck and read things. Yeah. In the snow. <laughs> With the murder hornets. <laughs> Maybe they won't get here because of the snow? Uh, yeah, I think that the murder hornets don't like the snow, but I also don't like the snow. So you're going to move closer to the murder hornets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like these are my choices these days. Are you reading anything? I am. Oh, I uh, was flipping through Instagram and one of the librarian slash romance readers that I follow, she was reading uh, Elizabeth Hoyt's The Raven Prince, which is one of my favorite books. And I enjoyed the series immensely. It's The Raven Prince, The Leopard Prince, and the, I always forget the last one because I don't like it. I can't remember. Um wonderful heroine the hero is introduced in not the best way and i remember when i read this book for the first time he's not described as physically attractive he's cranky and mm -hmm. rude on his first meeting and he grows on you so much because i almost stopped reading the book after well, that first, first couple of, all, of pages not everybody can be a beautiful duke it's just he not is a beautiful earl. He's <laughs> just not classically beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cuz of course, it's beauty by the standards of the day. Mhm. Mm Cuz I don't want to like give anybody a hard time, but he's got like pock marks on his face. Mm -hmm. And so that's a like really shameful thing in those days. Ow. Like obviously he was sick. And so you're kind of like, well, they're not describing him in the best light. Because also, he was incredibly rude. Like, well, there were numerous so things. Mr. Darcy. Yeah. And he's like a huge romance hero. So, yeah. Did you know that Agatha Christie wrote six romance novels? I did know that under, it was like... Mary Westmacott. Okay, because I was like, it's not... I was thinking yep. of Frankenstein. She wrote six romance novels under the name Mary Westmacott. And we actually have one here at the Amherst Library. Nice. So if you wanted to borrow a romance written by Agatha Christie, you can contact us and we will mail it to you. We only have one of them, so... That's all right. Yeah. I don't think, you know, they weren't as popular or as long-lived as her mysteries. That we know obviously. Of. Well, no, because, I mean, it's not a name you hear of all the time, but it Agatha is true. Christie, come on. She was, like, really, she's, like, a big name in mystery still, even though she passed away, like... Passing away doesn't mean <laughs> that you stop writing things. No. <laughs> it's true. That's for another episode, though. V.C. Andrews still puts out a book all the time. She passed away in 1984. She's still writing, apparently. I know. Anne Perry, of course. Anne Perry, yeah. Is a famous... Anne Perry, I can't remember what her real name is. Juliet, I think it's Hume, H-U-L-M-E. But if you... Read anything about her. She and her friend murdered murdered her friend's mother. Yes, in Australia. 
No, no New, New Zealand. Zealand? Yeah, yeah, I didn't write that down, actually. There's... um. Heavenly Creatures. There's a movie called Heavenly Creatures, yeah. And that's when you find out who she is, and it's like, ooh. There's also a really good book called, I think it's called Trial of the Century. I, we read it in my book club a couple of years ago. Right, yes. And, yeah, quite. My book club read an Ann Perry book, and then I told them this whole thing about how this is her pen name, and she's actually this, like, accused murderer who went to prison. Not accused, convicted, convicted murderer. Convicted murderer, right, who went to prison, and they did not realize this. No, and she, they were teenagers. Yeah. When they committed the crime. That does not mean that teenagers should kill people's parents. No, no. I'm just saying they were very, very young. Yes. They served, well, she served five years. Mm -hmm. And then they were sort of, they just went off into society and both changed their names. And yeah. the other girl, I think, is very reclusive. I don't know her name off the top of my head. But, of course, Anne Perry, I think, remarried and she moved to London and had this whole career. Yeah, and she publishes a lot. She does, yep. yeah. Any other... You have a whole big list of names. Now we're I we're running know. into 20 oh. minutes here, so... <laughs> I'm done with my list, okay. I think. So next week, we're going to talk about uh, seasonal books. Oh, are we in a different season yet? Should we do the all 11 seasons of <laughs> the Nova Scotia <laughs> year? <laughs> yes, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> talk to you next week. Bye. My Two Favorite Librarians. Brought to you by Copper Tree Boutique in Dales Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst.